to discuss how to consider the kinetic energy of an, a mass on a spring oscillator with in this video we're going to consider how to calculate the kinetic energy of a simple harmonic oscillator when the kinetic energy of the spring cannot be ignored so let me just draw a quick picture here of an idealized simple harmonic oscillator where a mass, we'll say, of cap value capital M is oscillating back and forth with an instantaneous speed V. And what we'll say here is, of course, there's no friction um, with the surface, but that the spring itself is going to be contributing kinetic energy to the oscillating system because the spring itself has mass and the spring itself has velocity. So what we'll like do is identify an element of the spring, we'll say something like this, and that that little element, that mass element, is wiggling back and forth. And the amount of kinetic energy that it contributes to the whole system uh, is going to be related not just to the mass in that little element, but to the speed of that element. So let's treat the mass of that element first. We're going to say that the element's mass dm is to the mass of the whole spring uh, as the size of this we're going to call ds is to the whole length of the whole spring which we're going to call l so dm is to m spring as ds is to l this tells us essentially how much uh, mass there is in, in the oscillating element uh, the other aspect of this that we need to consider is the speed of the oscillating element and we're going to make some assumptions about how the speed of each little element varies as we go from the point of attachment to the uh, to the end of the spring where the mass is oscillating, where the, the external mass is oscillating. So if we said that the, if, that the attached mass had an instantaneous speed of v, it would make sense to say that where the spring attaches to the mass, uh, the, the element of mass in the spring that's actually attached also has a speed of v. Uh, it stands to reason that the place where the uh, spring attaches to the wall that the, that the element of mass in the spring that, that attaches to the wall has a speed of zero. And so the way that we're going to treat that is we're going to say that the speed of the element, we'll call that V element, is equal to S over L V, where S is the variable location of element DS along uh, the spring, and v is the instantaneous velocity of the very end. So let's just think about this for a minute. The uh, value of s can go from uh, zero to l. If s is equal to zero, then the velocity of the element is zero, and if s is equal to l, then the velocity of the element is v. Halfway, it would obviously be one half, and so that's sort of baked into this analysis is the assumption that the speed of the element varies linearly as we go from where it's attached to the wall to where it's attached to the mass. Well, I think at this point, um, we're ready to calculate the kinetic energy that this little element brings to the system as it wiggles back and forth. We're gonna say one half, well, what is that? So we'll say dm, and then we'll say v element squared. And then this, the kinetic energy of that element, we'll say, is, is an element of the kinetic energy, dk, of the overall kinetic energy. And so to find the total, total kinetic energy that the spring contributes, we are going to integrate dk. We're going to sum up dk. And so in saying that, we'll say 1 half, or integral of 1 half dm v element squared from 0 to lowercase l. So here we say, okay, uh, I'm integrating over a length, but I've got a mass element here, so I'm going to change variables from dm to the length variable ds. So to do that, I just basically plug in for dm what I've got there. So I say zero to L, one half times m spring over L ds. And then I've got my V element squared, which is going to be S over L V, and then this whole thing is quantity squared.
So we've got our expression for the kinetic energy of the spring. Notice that this is not the element anymore, that this is the velocity of the spring where it attaches to the external mass. So that's gonna be the velocity of the external mass. Okay, and essentially I just wanna point out here that there's a lot of constants that come out of this integration. One half, the uh, m spring over l cubed comes out, l and then l squared. And then the v squared also comes out because this term is not a function of location along the spring because we define that to be the velocity at the end. And then I'm just left with a simple integration of s um, <coughs> squared ds. So s squared ds. So this, uh, obviously, when I do this integration, I get l cubed over 3 minus 0. So I'm going to get 1 third out in front times 1 half m spring over l cubed v squared times l cubed. These cancel out. So I have 1 half. So I'm just going to factor this back in to show that the overall mass of the spring that's going to factor is one third the mass of the spring v squared. So if I went to calculate the total kinetic energy of the mass spring oscillator, I need to include this part of the, uh, th this part of the kinetic energy is what comes from the spring. And so I can also say that the total energy in the system is equal to the total kin the kinetic energy contributed by the spring plus the kinetic energy contributed by the mass as it oscillates. So I'm gonna get uh, 1 half m spring over 3 v squared plus 1 half m, that's the hanging mass or the external mass, v squared. And so if I factor out the 1 half v squared, I get m spring over 3 plus m so this is the effective mass of the oscillating system as calculated by energy considerations. And also I just want to point out that this assumption that the velocity of the element scales linearly with the um, location on the spring is untested. And so that the fact that that's uh, an assumption that we haven't tested might um, indicate that that is something that might not necessarily, uh, sh uh, that might be a source of error in, in the data in your experiment.